I will uh, yell at you if you go over five minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, quick point of order. I'm trying to see you, and I don't see you because you're using that laptop. So, okay, I'll just use this. Oh my god, the podium is being used. <gasps> don't worry about it. I got it covered. You're five minutes, right? You gotta go. I got it. Okay, everybody, we're starting five minutes of fame. And if you want to see some exciting, cool things happening by Noise Bridgers, come and join us. Otherwise, try to keep the noise to a minimum because this is the little laptop that's recording and it may not have the best microphone. And if you're presenting, try to speak as loudly as possible because, once again, this is a little laptop that's recording and it doesn't have the best microphone. Let the presenter have the, uh, oh, you can't record. Should be. I'm recording on my little laptop. Will it take audio? Yeah, I'm not asking. Don't even worry about it. Okay. Okay. Just everybody try to be quiet and listen to the presenters. <laughs> Introduce yourself. Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Wolf, and today uh, I'm talking about the Muni Metro signaling system. Uh, so I was I was taking a trip uh, the other day, and the train uh, was was going through the uh, Market Street tunnel, and it stopped outside the tunnel, and I happened to be near the front of the train, and I saw a sign that said "Stop here for." I think it was "Stop here for ATS pickup." What's that? And I fell down a rabbit hole. Um, so th this is the um, Muni, complete Muni map. Um, Muni was originally built to run on what's called a block signaling system. Um, so as you can see from this illustration, block signaling is a very old, uh, very old principle. Um, it's basically uh, you put a current down the track, and if a train comes along, Train's, wheel, train's wheels are metal, and they will short out the track, and when your track shorts out, you go, oh, there's a train on the track. Um, and then you can use that to operate signals and make it go red behind the train, so another train can't come along and scratch it back. Um, so that is uh, this top illustration here. Uh, the, 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 the problem with this is that the blocks are fixed. It means that if you've got a train that's going really slowly, you still have to keep a giant block Behind it, uh, which means there's only so many trains that you can fit in, say, a very crowded metro tunnel under Market Street. So, uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, I think, uh, they switched to what's called a moving block system, um, where you have this extremely complicated computerized system where there's like inductive loops under the track, and a computer in the train, and a computer in the station, and another computer in the central control room, and they all talk to each other. And it figures out like how fast should this train be going? How fast is this train going? Uh, if, if they're all uh, and then like stops the train, keeps the trains from getting too, too close together at the same speed. Um, so Muni still uses block signaling on the surface. Uh, they still have block signaling in the tunnel, but they mostly don't need it because they're using this automatic train control system. Uh, this. Yellow boxes here are the, the, the sections where there's a tunnel where they're using on that train control and they've got the fancy computerized thing. It does. So there's two separate boxes, but it does actually go these three lines here. You don't have to leave them the end of the section that you're all in the line of the stage in the tunnel. Um, and this is all run off of, because it was done in the 90s, uh, the original control system was in uh, OS2. Um, they recently, like about five years ago, upgraded this uh, to Windows. So they've now got a slightly fancier. Two minutes. Okay. Uh, they've now got a slightly fancier sort of control panel, and, and it's all running Windows now. One of the interesting things I found out last, uh, when I was digging into all of this was they have a website, sfmuniacentral.com. Uh, where they just like one of the computers in the control center takes a screenshot, takes a screenshot every five seconds and posts it, posts a JPEG to this website. Um, it was originally intended for like internal Muni operations, and then somebody discovered the URL and posted it on Reddit, and they're like, okay, I guess we should make a website explaining what's going on here. So you can go to visit this, you can see what's in the subway right now. Um, <clears throat> and the other thing. Uh, oh, here are sources. You know, like, where do I get all of these slides from? Uh, the other thing you can do, which I did, is you can write a program uh, which 
downloads that picture every five seconds and turns it into a time lapse. So, this is, this is the final power punch on I left. You can watch the time lapse from the, uh, I believe this is Monday morning, this past Monday. And you can ask me any questions you might have or drop them down in the audience. Could you, could you put like a scrubber UI on that so people could just move the timeline uh, on I mean, a website? This is just a video of you. But if you put the video on a website with a scrubber, then people could scrub it and like look at different time scales. Yeah. Um, I, I haven't done that because that's not good. Is that the end of my time? 12 more seconds. Okay. Yes. So what part of the system is this showing? This is the entire tunnel under Market Street. So, uh, and as it so comes in the west portal over here on the left, okay. it leaves by the work there on the right. There's also an exit. So what are the identifiers on there? Can everyone see the details? Uh, I didn't see the feature. It's not under all the Oh, those are the um, all the uh, system or numbers. So if you can see two M's, that's a two car M frame. Um, oh, okay. And then the, the identifiers are like your West portal. Uh, okay, so. Also, a more detailed explanation on my website. So, so they don't use this anymore because someone found out about it? No, 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 they, they do. They do. Uh, they, so, this is a picture of the Connected Coast. So, that they also use the website, uh, but because somebody found out about it, they have now an explanation on the website rather than just a bunch of data. So, you need to know, you know what it means. Uh, <laughs> it would also be cool if you could use augmented reality to see through the ground. <laughs> in real time, like if you could see where they are. How, how, how often is it updated? Uh, five seconds. Ooh. Yeah, you could do real time x ray through the ground. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> Who's next? Is anybody ready to go next? Talk about what you're working on. Yeah. Sure. I hear I may have set too high of a bar for you. This is great. Um, you can go right now. I'm sorry about you. Yeah, I don't even know. I'm not going to be late for this. If you can bring your computer. Well, I'm just, I'm not even playing it. Okay. We're also working on it. Can I go by the way? No, just do it. Do it live. Uh, just join Jitsi and screen share. Although uh, I didn't see the screen share from the last presenter, so I pointed my camera at this computer that did show it. That works. Jitsi is this weird. Is the Jitsi for the noise bridge. Beep, just noise bridge. Jitsi. Beep, jit .c. Noise bridge. Beep. 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 Noisebridge.net slash contact slash Jitsi. Okay, noisebridge.net. Yeah, you click the contact at the top, and then, or just noisebridge.net slash wiki slash Jitsi. It's coming to your slash. And done. Do you want to Think about Sunday streets too. Hmm? We could show Sunday streets. We have a we have a giant poster on stage.
some theory about how compatibility works and like basically it's gonna be this week. And then after I'll give a couple of like Alright, so um, I think people are compatible based on similarity. However, because people can do change, I think that um, the real metric of compatibility is not how similar you are, but how difficult it is to change yourself to be like someone else. Uh, so yourself, because changing other people is not as difficult. Uh, this can only be measured one way. It's possibly to be more compatible with someone else than they are with you, and vice versa. Uh, I have another note about something. Um, okay, so I think if you wanted to define a hierarchy of the things that are the most difficult to stop yourself to change, uh, it would go like this. First, your subconscious. Um, so uh, I think uh, most interpersonal chemistry is derivative of the way two people think. Uh, and so, uh, like, Conversational skill is great, but if you think the same way, you're gonna buy. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's yeah, okay, okay. Uh, in this category, we're also called anything and everything about you in your personality is not conscious. So, emotional makeup, character traits, strengths and weaknesses, preferences, inclinations, etc. Um, it's the most important category because it's the hardest thing to change about yourself. Uh, so that's my first part. Uh, the second is your conscious. So everything you know and consciously do. Knowledge, derivative beliefs, ethics, decisions, etc. It's easier to change by yourself than the subconscious, so that's what comes second. And then uh, lastly is practicalities. So distance, socioeconomic stuff, language, social, cultural barriers might keep two otherwise compatible people apart. It's easier to change than the previous two, so that's why comes third. Um, and okay, if we're going, this theory is not necessarily romantic, uh, but of course it does apply to romance. Noting that uh, there are a lot of things that span the first category, like hobbies and interests, sexual attraction, they're uh, both valuable to uh, some degree and limited in the way that they can change the other. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Um, okay, common objections people often say, well, no hostages to track. And uh, my response is uh, this theory does not speak to attraction, uh, only compatibility. Um, I think attraction is a metric of compatibility, uh, especially romantically, so it does make a difference. Uh, but uh, I would say attraction is what draws people together. Compatibility is just how well suited they are to be actually together. Uh, it's important to know those are two completely different things. Uh, and it's in the fact to change for other people, and that depends entirely on the reason that you are changing. It's completely possible to change yourself in positive ways for other people, and also. Uh, the opposite is true. Positive to change yourself negatively for other people. Uh, so whether your changes are good or bad is situation. Um, when people say don't change yourself for other people, they usually mean don't do things you don't want to do or things that are bad for you just for other people, which is yeah. Uh, okay. And then the last the way this theory is presented assumes long-term relationships. Um, so you would order things differently uh, for a different length of paradigm. Uh, okay, and then my side note would just be, um, someone recently challenged me on this, uh, saying that uh, it feels like the metric for compatibility is when two people, however, how well two people are together, versus um, unidirectional. Uh, but I feel like it makes more sense to think of it as unidirectional because, um, because you are measuring um, the difficulty in changing things about yourself, and that's why I feel like that. Dating or in a relationship for a while, and then they get separated. What is the chance that they're in a relationship after ten, you know, months or so, or like what would you suggest? Uh, 
but no, I at least, okay. It wouldn't, it wouldn't necessarily predict that because um, I think specifically uh, compatibility is um, how similar you are to someone else. Uh, and whether or not you stay together in a relationship might be dependent on all those factors. It might have nothing to do with the fact that you are, uh, I don't know, that you are very similar and I don't know, everything might be good. Or at least, for example, a practicality might get in the way and you might know so. So, so, so I guess like, let's say you think the population of people that you've been in a relationship for a while, and you say, how similar are you to the other person? Uh, yeah, or at least, uh, if they are dissimilar, how difficult would it be to close the gap? Literally any two people. Yeah. Uh, so, um, and it's, it's, I think uh, technically it could be literally any two people on the planet. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's not romantic and it's not long term. It's just uh, how people, I don't know. Um, and, uh, but this specifically, I'm oh, sorry, the way this is presented assumes long term relationship. Uh, if the reason that you're, you might want to be together, you might bore at least things differently. So, for example, um, I don't know, uh, for like a relationship that you know will be short, you might not care at all about uh, being compatible on the, the quantum scale. So, like matching up your beliefs and or um, you know those things. Uh, but I think most relationships do really value the quantum primarily. I would think of ethics rules for me as far as those. Maybe you sort of subsume this in think alike, but uh, so attachment styles are a thing. 
and they're pretty scientifically uh, sort of uh, demonstrated to exist. Um, and a lot of relationships uh, are influenced heavily by the attachment style of the parties and whether or not they're able to figure out when they have different attachment styles how to uh, kind of work on the challenges that those pose. Do you, do you figure that in your model in one of the areas I've already mentioned, or do you think that's worth its own category? Let's do this. I'd love to talk with you later about attachment styles, uh, but uh, I do not agree with the new two. I have problems with the theory of attachment, okay. um, and I am not sure if it is scientific. Uh, I would love to hear more about that. Um, okay. Actually, I will address something else that you said, Mark. Uh, you said that. Um, Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I've been, I've been messing around. Can you quickly respond? Yeah, uh, just, just um, so I, I, I said that uh, if people think the same way, they're gonna buy it. Uh, I would, I would amend, and I should probably, I'll fix this in my notes. Uh, to, to the extent that they think the same way, they will probably buy. Uh, I'm not, I'm not saying that everyone thinks the same way to buy, but uh, there are a lot of other factors. Some people are scaling factor one, some not. So. Uh, Again, the, the metric that we're shooting for here is long term. Um, All right. Great talk. Who's next? I'm not seeing a user Linux Jitsi message here. That just meant that they joined. Yeah. Oh, like a hand up? Um, not sure. Okay. So who's who's up to speak? You can just describe that you don't know what to do next and where you're at. It's fine. What do you want to do? What? You can ask for help. You can say, hey, who wants, who wants to help with this project? OK. So who, who's up next? Anybody up next? Is anybody online wanting to talk? Cloud, did you have something? Are they able to hear us? Yeah. OK. You do? All right, Sophia. Let's hear it for Sophia. I just present to the Jitsi. Okay. What's the Jitsi like? Uh, it is jit.si slash noisebridge, correct? Meet.si. Sorry, meet.jit.si slash noisebridge. Okay. Good stuff. I'm wondering if SI is something like. I'll, I'll so, yeah, yeah, they're probably like, like no. supporting a dictator somewhere. Just <laughs> yeah, to have yeah, that domain. Like, so, like Slovenia. Like, yeah, Slovenia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, Notion, Notion had SO, and then, like, the Somalian government fell in, like, a civil war. <laughs> so, they had to, like, move off of SO. And they're just like, yeah. uh, tell me when you want to start. Uh, yeah. Questions uh, can go over the timer. Timer, the timer is a suggestion. I'll just be like hands to tell you the time. Okay. Yeah, I can't, um, uh, it's not really loading. Oh, oh, it's, it's not all the same. Do we just select a different? Is it going to want to extend its Wi-Fi? I think it's like all the same. So I need like Robo Tears. Where did you go for Boba? Yeah. Where did you go for Boba? Ritual Coffee? This five minutes of fame is sponsored by Ritual Coffee. <laughs> but they don't have power outlets. They don't? What did they do? They run off of gas? But Manny's does. Hello. Sophia's getting the, the thing to talk to Jitsi. All right. We we see. It is visible. Good job. Thank you, Tax Figure. You are legible and also, now. Okay, so my friend, she was like, this is just like, like a little silly game that I made. 
So my friend, uh, this woman, uh, she did a, this one slim, uh, she was really fucking annoyed because this, um, this friend of hers was like, uh, uh, this friend of her boyfriend's was like, oh, what if I bet you $500, like, what if we like bet $500 on a coin flip, but I give you a dollar either way, right? So it's like, <laughs> the expected value is a dollar, but almost always, so, so you either get, you get $501 if you win, or you lose $499 uh, and she was like, why would you ever play this game? This is ridiculous, right? So I was like, that sounds really funny. So what if you play that game like over and over and over again, like thousands of times, um, and, or like not that, like, like a bunch of times, uh, with a particular bankroll, like what was your average, like what percentage of the time would you lose all your money? Um, so this is a, a service to do, uh, not a service. It's a different thread.
the x-axis is iteration of the y-axis is next step. So I could like, so, so anyway, so in my head, this is like the six-dimensional space, right? You'll be moving around in a six-dimensional space with these two tools. And so right, the 2D, you have a 2D outcome space, which is um, the like uh, count against uh, like, or the count against the result, and then you have a 4D input space. And you're like, again, like we're traversing through this. Um, anyway, I'm not really sure what a better way, I mean, the problem is with six dimensions, it doesn't really make sense. Um, like people, like it maybe doesn't really visualize. Um, it'd be cool if I could do like a three dimensional version of this. That would be fun. Like if I just did like iterations and depth or something like that, and then I had a third dimension or something. So that third dimension is a different dimension and I had someone else. Did you have anybody play this, and how did people respond to it? Uh, no, I just sent it to the person who, like this, my, my friend just put it in a group chat, like, oh, this is so annoying, and then I just sent it to her later that day, because I was like, that was all I needed. It's the only other time. Has she tried it yet? What? Do you know if she's tried it yet? I think she did. I think she liked it. I could pull up the chats to see if she, uh, I think she ended up not looking at it, uh, being honest. No, because she still doesn't like it. And see, there's good evidence that even if you're on average better, like 80% of the time you go good if you like keep your consistent. Um, like even with a small number of iterations, like uh, even with 10 iterations. Um, okay, so if you have like, if you're doing like 10 iterations, you'll have a bank roll of like 2,000 with a bed of like you know, 500, 800. Like, odds are quite good that you go back. So, this can be profitable for a casino. That's <laughs> yeah. what I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, well that's the tricky part. Right? But a good player would know when to get out. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Well, if, if they were allowed to control that. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Who's up for next? Anybody else ready to go? Is there about guilt? Seems like a good time. Mark is going to speak extempor extemporaneously. Extemporaneously? That sounds pretty crazy. What does that mean? It's what you're doing. Oh, okay. Just keep doing it. Am I speaking into a microphone right now? This is the microphone, so shout. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I don't have anything planned at all, but I was going to talk about guilds because that's a fun thing to talk about. Proselytizing. Okay. Uh, for some reason, I can't find it. Uh, we just had a meeting tonight about it, and we're going to try and have these meetings every Thursday. If you're interested in this concept, um, uh, Anarcho Syndicalism, and if you're interested in getting it in a very real way, I'd like to see you at least come to the meetings or just participate asynchronously in the Discord chat. Uh, we have a MetaGuild channel. That's what it's called, MetaGuild. So what is a guild, in case anyone isn't familiar or picking up the speed? A guild is a group that has an interest in uh, maintaining resources and running events and just really putting it in their interest, really. Uh, so um, there are a few guilds that exist to some extent here already at Earth Bridge. Um, MetaGuild is one of them, and MetaGuild's uh, job is to try and the guild system and 
because the whole idea of a guild is that it's a competitive sort of thing. He says, uh, this is uh, some kind of practice in anarchism, after all. Uh, so we're just, we're just there to say, like, you know, keep, keep the guild system moving along and make sure people are actually moving in and doing things. So part of that is just keeping tabs on uh, guilds and what they're doing and uh, and uh, are helping them. Yeah, so we just, we're just kind of consistent with the fact that it's uh, in, the, in the actual community that we're trying to help and, and help. Uh, so uh, we talked about a few things in tonight's meeting, um, things about like what the definition of a guild is. It's still kind of an open topic of discussion, really. Um, there's kind of a philosophical question about it uh, as it pertains to, honestly, it's, it's a lot of semantics. So um, we talk about uh, like points of action, how do you sort of like figure out uh, how to find people to uh, run the groups that we think need group runners, engaging okay, leaders, um, sharing leverage, and how to best facilitate that. Um, we talk about uh, projects, we talk about event support, and managing our, our, our internal and external communications. So Metagild uh, covers all these kind of topics and more, and it's a really up-to-date program. Uh, once they get involved in it, they just want to steer the conversation. It's very open and fluid uh, right now, so I encourage you to come into our Discord channel and chat with us. And attend the meeting on Thursday if you can, but it's not necessary. Yeah. I'm also open to a different meeting time. Um, so if anyone thinks they want to What channel can people talk to, to you about this in? Sorry. What channel to talk about this? Join. Join. Oh, I already said hashtag Metagill. Yeah. It's uh, Metagill's channel in Discord. It is slash Metagill. Yeah. 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 Well, at least you can make the talks run on time. So. <laughs> uh, Thank you for your time. Anybody else have a talk? I see someone in the audience who is preparing a talk. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, user Linux wants to say something. Go ahead. Go ahead. We can hear you. Okay. If you want to share, uh, you gotta you gotta share your screen or your video camera so we can see you. Yeah, I'm going to put my, my laptop right next to the other laptop because that's the speaker. And not in the middle of recording, no. And just speak as loud as you can. Everyone be quiet and speak loud. Thank you. Um, you want to do the timer stuff? Am I going to have to mute you or something real quick? I can do the timer. All right, sounds good. All right, we can see. Okay. Can y'all see my? Uh, yes. Screen? Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, let me make this bigger in case I don't want it. So I'm just going to show just a basic like uh, example of how to use Kubernetes and um, 
something like a Docker file. Um, so uh, this is a simple hello world app. Um, and uh, so, and um, it says like, basically you can customize it, like say hello world. Um, um, and um, but you need to like edit the source code. Um, but I'm, I'm gonna just, so what I did is we, we build a Docker image and I say like, hello noise bridge three, and give it the path. And while it builds it, then you tag it. Um, so this thing is blocking my view. Let me hide it. <laughs> um, and this is my Docker Hub account. Um, so then I'm going to push it there. Um, and then, um, so obviously to do that, you need to have some kind of Kubernetes cluster. But that's really easy to do. I did like I ran this command. I just did it to save time. So you can use K3G uh, or uh, Kind or Infi. But anyways, um, and then I'm gonna create a deployment. Basically, call it um, this close noise bridge three business image. Um, and it shows the cards and the card. Um, so, it took some time to create. Um, one of them is the, okay, good. Um, one of them has an error there. I'm just like, my most of the say, delete pod. Oh, I need uh, KLS deployments. Um, K deployments. And this is the default namespace. Okay, I want to carry delete that deployment because that one's failing. And then go with the and K expose deployment. Uh, hello, maybe what? Three minutes. Okay, thank you. And then um, I'm going to. A little smoke in there is going on. Um, okay, port forward um, deployment uh, pod. Um, so you got to get the pod name right here. Um, pod. Um, um, Okay, and I gotta share my window, show the whole screen. Um, make sure this is kind of worse. Okay. Okay. Um, share. Share again. Okay, we lost the screen um, share. I'm sorry? Okay, it's back. Okay, so what I did is just like I exposed it. Here, this is like a nothing there. But I exposed it, and then now you can send a request to it. So um, if I open another browser or another tab here, I just do curl localhost. It's basically the same response as doing it in your browser. Now, what I want to do is just make this dynamic. So when you have the source code, uh, oh my god, I'm in like another CD series here. So I want what I want to do is um, you put like you can put a dynamic port or put these like um, um, in a Docker file and then it, it'll automatically uh, like use JavaScript to ch ch change your message. Like this will give you like a, this is just a test, but um, yeah, to get like a. You know, hello, how do you want to customize it? So make that dynamic. Um, and then like automate the process of what I just did, the commands I did, Docker build, Docker, uh, I'm sorry, Docker build, Docker tag, Docker push, do that like through automation, um, through either the tool or the master. So yeah, it's just a very simple uh, experiment. Um, so how I stop sharing, um, if you 
under your business name. Uh, um, okay, I think. Um, okay, so we're at time. So do you want to tell us to summarize where where you're going with this or what it's for? If they want to follow up with you and learn more. Oh yeah, let me stop sharing. So I had. Okay, so um, it's just um, it's like a, I'm trying to use the GitOps tool to like basically um, pick up automation changes, like um, when you change your source code. Um, and just how to like deploy instantly. Uh, we're trying to do a Python example, but um, I think, uh, I don't know if it's that or Node is better. I don't know if you can change a, like a Python file. Like say it's like hello world, right? You want to say like hello noise bridge. Like I know JavaScript is dynamic, um, but I want to see if you can do that in Python as well, like change a message to the, you know, Either the JS or the .py file. So, um, and then, um, it, it, but it, it's challenging because it's not like an, an, uh, just a, an app. It's it's in a Kubernetes. It has to like it's hard coded in an image basically. So you have to like I guess build. It doesn't it doesn't compile it, but it has to like update the new tag I guess or whatever. So yeah. Play cool. Looks like you're yeah. doing well. I know it's very basic, nothing really super challenging. That's great. All right, thanks. Cool. Do we have, do we have any questions or comments for him? Yeah, questions. Do we have a toy example or so? Could you hear? The question was, uh, do you have any GitHub examples that someone could try? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so, um, I want to, I need to like make my screen a little bigger because it's too many windows. Um, so yeah, I, bas I basically use a GitHub um, re uh, repo. Um, I want to paste it in chat. Um, so all the images are in, uh, I use this guy. Um, so this is where you can find a Docker file. Uh, um, and um, yeah, um, and um, and then you could do the. Uh, I'll, I'll follow up with like my own README. Um, I'm not trying to like steal anyone's work here, but I want to follow my own README um, and just say like, oh, how to run and how to build this. And uh, you know, this would get set up, and and like uh, the set up your own cluster. Uh, I think the hardest part is just setting up the cluster, uh, and, and like you know, um, just the prerequisites basically. Like the goal is you want to deploy an app, then you gotta like do these steps or whatever to get there. So yeah, I'll, I'll share that and um, um, we'll put it in. Um, Someone who have interested. Great. Thanks. Thanks. All right, we have our next speaker. Presenting Lauren, and what are you going to present about, Lauren? Um, I'm going to present about uh, building codes, uh, safety, and uh, no, building codes and jumping Yay! Uh, did you put it up on the Jitsi? All right, we can see stuff. Um, welcome to my notes that I've written up for. Um, 
was thinking of what I want to do in the future. Um, electrical work only killed 126 workers in 2020. Um, there, uh, um, inadequate grounding. Um, What inspired this talk uh, is uh, some space we have upstairs where we have water pipes and Ethernet cables um, in contact with each other. Um, I was hearing some stories recently about uh, uh, about working in a house um, and finding that uh, a place where Ethernet cables crossed some power cables um, was worn down over time, uh, and someone working on wiring to their house uh, grabbed an Ethernet cable uh, and got a shot. Um, I want to. Uh, I want to. So people who are uh, concerned about um, uh, safety and the what clear organization of noise bridge, um, I'm uh, putting out a call to assemble and do some more work. Um, and in, in doing quick research for this talk, um, some fun. Fun things I've learned uh, about building codes. Um, handrails need uh, need returns into the wall um, so that you don't catch uh, clothing or persons on them. Um, I think catch loose items on them uh, and cause falls. Um, pretty useful backstory. Uh, it's now recommended. This is kind of fun fact. It's now recommended that um, in new houses uh, you ground to the rebar and the foundation. Provides better grounding than uh, ground rods into the ground. Um, what other stories? Sorry? Three. Thank you. Uh, interestingly, um, you're not only supposed to ground um, pipes, uh, pipes, and I guess so not Ethernet cables in this case, but um, water pipes. Um, Conduits, uh, you're also supposed to tie them into each other. Um, there are cases where voltage differences between different pipes that aren't bonded together um, can be enough to cause uh, cause a shock. Um, other fun facts: uh, doing electrical work for yourself in your own home um, is allowed according to code, um, but doing electrical work for friends and family. Licensed uh, electrician to do that or learn how to do it yourself. Um, finally, last little reminder uh, check, your, check your smoke alarms and carbon monoxide alarms in your home. Um, if you don't have them, get them. <laughs> they save lives. And uh, remember, carbon monoxide sinks, so put them lower than where you sleep. Uh, or put the carbon monoxide alarm lower than you sleep. Yes, please. Let's talk more later. <laughs> um, last, another uh, environmental health and safety call out. Um, thanks to, I think it was Mike, Michael, who did uh, who set up the air quality monitors at um, upstairs in the front room and somewhere what else? downstairs. Um, let's add more new lens tether and new lens shelf. Uh, any questions? Um, I thought I said that, but if, okay. if I didn't, yes, I did. You can get them for 10 bucks. Wait, so I could get like something that low? They should be lower than where you sleep. 
with the idea of being the first I, I didn't know that. The miner just played from GTA High. So you would die before <laughs> it got so set I, up. Okay, I could move them to lower. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's new information for that me too. Yeah, I don't. The more you know. <laughs> yeah, I was I think a lot of people do fall asleep high. <laughs> um, who's next? Um, do we have anybody next? Who's next? We have something large approaching. Oh, no. I, I figured, you know, this uh, Ooh. set piece will make it more interesting. What do you want? Yeah. <laughs> Cloud, I hope you're paying attention, because if, if something exciting happens and you're not watching, you'll, you'll be sad. <laughs> It's very shiny. I know. Um, you're doing that? I'll do it too. Yeah. This is definitely yeah, like very, mid project cool. presentation, so I apologize. Um, Not a bright mark. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I guess. Uh, Few weeks ago, like everyone else, I was, you know, really excited about the James Webb Space Telescope's first I images, it up. and um, I've been following this for a while because I'm a, you know, NASA geek and such. So what really got me, um, I guess, seeing the images again made me like go back and read more about it, and I sort of became obsessed with like this giant, awesome mirror that they constructed to explain why these flux fields why, and. I was just kind of toying around with this idea, and I realized I had no idea how to make a mirror. Um, and I've also always wanted to make a cellular still, a basic way of like cleaning water, getting water with the power of the sun. Um, really simple to do. You can do it with a sheet of plastic. Um, you know, all you need is just to gently evaporate water and evaporate off, you know, cart it off to you know a separate. Um, yeah, so here's like the simplest example. Here's like the slightly more, you know, well-constructed one. But these are all cool and all, but I want to violently boil water because that is more interesting. Um, so um, I was doing some calculations, and these are like conservative estimates. So like on a cloudy day, you can get about 550 watts per square, uh, square meter. Um, this is slightly larger than that. Um, so here's the low energy output for this. Um, this is how much water I want to boil. That This should boil a liter of water in a little over five minutes on a cloudy day. Um, so yeah, so the basic idea is like, you know, pump in, pump in crappy water, boil it, get clean water, get rid of the sludge water. Um, so one of my favorite things is in power generation is using sun for heat instead of directly for um, electricity. Solar panels are awesome, but you know they're inefficient, so if you can use the power of the sun for heat, that's great. Um, so this is a molten solar power plant in China. There's also one in Nevada. Um, basically, when I was thinking, I'm like, oh, what if I wanted to boil this faster? I'm not going to make a bigger mirror. I can just get multiple mirrors and with the power of travel, have them at the same focal point and just you know get more waters fast. Um, so I was looking into how to make a parabola, uh, or a parabolic reflector. Um, I stole this design, um, but it's version one. Um, I also was learning how to make um, uh, off-axis reflectors. I still haven't done that yet. I need to just use a laser cutter for that. Um, but the idea is like, okay, I'm going to have a bunch of mirrors set up around something, and you know, get crazy high wattage there. Um, I'm advancing up. I'm something down. Um, but I was also, when I was looking at this, I was like, you know, this is really awesome looking. I love it, but you know what, it, it could be made, like, if I'm doing this, I might as well make it something hard to do as well. So I was like, you know what this looks like? This is a flower, basically. So what I could, so there's basically, I was like, okay, I can, you can have different para parabolas, parabolic reflectors with different curvatures for pointing at the same focal point. I could do the outer and the inner. So like, here's a parabola. Here's a different parabola, but I can spiral. So 
built that way. It's like you can have these two things in the same place. So I was like, okay, you know, here's the first round for the mirrors, and they're all pointing here. This is not the scale. This is the sketch. Um, but yeah, so this is like what I'm trying to work on. I've, I've like slowly got a 3D uh, model coming together that I'm hoping to test tonight or tomorrow. Um, but yeah, so this is like deflated. The, the way this works is this is mylar, which you can get one minute for really cheap. Like you get this and so much more for two bucks. It's an emergency safety blanket. So you can make this whole thing for like a little less than forty dollars. So basically, you stretch it taut and then you suck all the air out. Um, okay, yeah. So here's a picture of it evacuated. Um, actually, a video of it evacuated. Um, I got a little bit scared because there's not. This is a seven foot focal length, um, so I need to make one that's a much much shorter one. Um, but yeah, so once you get that high intensity, like you really care about where you're going. So um, yeah, so this is a project that I'm like learning a bunch of things because like, none of this is in my wheelhouse, but it's a lot of fun and I'm just slowly becoming a better model. And ask me about the energy. Just tell me about it. It's going to be a lot better. <laughs> Oh, sorry. That was a that was a picture of um, in this photo. This is actually a parabolic reflector. So there's a hole here. I suck the air out. Um, mylar is very flexible, so it will bend. Um, and because the air is putting pressure on all indications, and you know it's fairly um, constant consistency, like the way it bends is not a problem. So ah. and the fact that this is square does cause distortion, but like. For the purpose of aiming at a target full of water, it's not that big of a deal. So is it really airtight enough for that yeah. to work without it leaking? Yeah, so this is, if you come, notice that it's like wrapped in packing tape all around, and I had a lot of silicon uh, tossed around the inside, and it held pressure for about three days. Um, and then I dropped it a few times, and then lost pressure quicker, but it still holds the seal for <laughs> at least a few hours. So, but this is deep water. Is anybody else up to go next? That's very cool. CJ?
The idea of a Sinebase network is, is basically you have a comparison. What you do is you take an input, you take a set of inputs, and you try, uh, rather than do a, a try and classify or label something, you try and make every like similar classes. You actually try and compare between classes to make sure that it's itself similar. Um, so if you put in like an A and another picture of an A, then um, it can show that the A, the two A's are so or like the two A's are very are very close to the You create an embedding such that A's are very close together because they're of a they're similar to the class of A's. Um, so like the last time I'm gonna do a quick like go through uh, Python's uh, Jupyter notebook. Um, so here we're gonna import some dependencies. Um, this is actually gonna be a lot more to do with um, how to screw up when training um, and how to get around it. Um, so we got some pretty straightforward stuff here. We're, we're, in, we're importing libraries, we're loading in this, like, so, and this should be easy. Um, but, but, um, and here we just view the data. And so initially what you see here is Thing called what I call a Siamese link, which what I'm doing is I'm gonna put it every time it every if you give it an index, it will just um, it just essentially converts it into a gigantic sixty thousand by sixty thousand coordinate system. So I, if you give it if you get an index, it will say like like so if it's one hundred twenty thousand, it will be. Anyways, it actually takes at at each time it will take it will draw the, the uh, uh, both these images smack them together, and then we'll use it as a Siamese link. Um, this is the thing I messed with. So it sounds like we're not have a ton of time. This is the thing where I messed with, um, where instead I only uh, subtracted. So of only like it's only a small data set. So the original it's a uh, Siamese data set that I made. Is will have give you like um, you know three hundred sixty million uh, yeah so three hundred sixty million um, so this one is just pared down a little bit uh, three hundred sixty million um, so what you'll see here um, when we get to it is. Um, what you start seeing in this training is that very quickly I get a bunch of nods. Um, and that's not good. So why does this happen? Um, well, actually, a very interesting quirk is that um, because this square root, so one tip, if you're doing square root, always try and add in Because it has because for a square root of zero, um, even if this like square root of zero is a computable number, but um, the, the derivative of square root is, is not a number. So the back propagation it found something that was a zero output and just created a bunch of nonce. Another thing that happened um, is that you can see oh, there's a lot of like dead space here. Um, Generally speaking, with dropout, you don't want to. Um, with dropout, you don't actually. So, in the original model, there's a lot of dropout, um, and you don't really want that because, um, or it's it's usually to make it more robust. But with small networks, you don't really want a lot of dropout. Um, you also there's also an interesting thing with doing the 
Uh, I noticed that if you have a ring on the end, that will also zero out a lot of the outputs because it's sort of like the crux of the entire thing. Um, and with all of this in mind, I don't think so much anymore. Um, Let's go to the slide. Okay. Well, I'll share this. Anyways, this was the end result. You actually see, like, each of these numbers have an embedding that is very complex. You see, actually, all of the functions. Uh, Name those for us. Yeah. So in order, this blue one's zero, orange is one, uh, green is two, red is three, purple is four, um, brown is five, pink is six, gray is seven, orange is yellow. I guess dark yellow is. Um, these are, this is, so what I did is I embedded it. So the neural network, the, the. A projection down. Yeah, down. it's projection down. It, it's a projection, this is just a projection into a random 2D space. So what I did was I took, it, it took images of handwritten numbers and condensed it down to a vector such that, or a two dimension, it condensed it, it condensed it down to a two dimensional space in which you can actually define regions um, that are numbers. Um, and the idea of having this kind of embedding is that you can actually tell, um, it actually can distinguish between this actually having a vertical or like a continuous space. You can actually have like custom data, like ones and stuff to be able to look easily. Um, the other thing you can do, um, and I did this auto encoding stuff, you can have something that's either a unique letter or number, and if it's somewhere here, uh, if it looks somewhere like half between a one and a two, it'll be a, a proper encoded number, and you will have a number. Well, my, the way to read this would say that it makes that one and five more similar Sim somehow. Related, related yes. question. Related yeah. question. Yeah. yeah. Does it, do the distances matter? Um, is this a random projection, or is this a, like, different macro projection? Yeah. Um, this is, this is it's done with triplet blocks, so like this is just like distinguish, make make things that are of the same class as books as possible, and make things that are not of the same class as books as possible. Um, so one, is, yeah. So I think one and five, you could a lot of ones and ends up kind of like being like like this for example, just sort of like this like you know. So uh, they have you know they they take a lot. Of, there's a lot of like. Yeah, so this was this is sort of like a very in progress embedding. Um, just wanted to so the conclusions are um, dropout, um, ray loose sometimes flat will flat like in, in the output might flat like data, um, spur roots. Make sure when doing losses to keep spur roots in mind. Um, always to add up the like either don't do them. Usually just don't do them, but if you do it, have like a small constant to make it as small as possible. Um, so you don't like run into the arms. Uh, uh, also, bad, also make your data as concise as possible. So I think that's sort of the way to do this. It's recording live audio oh. through OBS. Okay. Is there power up there? On the podium? No. There's no power? No. GPU will die. Um, you can plug it into the. the uh, well, I can plug yeah. it in. Oh, yeah. Plug it into the, uh, the battery backup on the. So uh, the internet doesn't have sound. I think the Mac was turned off and it's not plugged in. Oh. Uh, oh. You gotta plug in your computer. Yeah. I okay. So unmute my computer and switch to my computer. Okay. Uh, at the bottom. Yeah. 
Can you hear us now? They can sort of hear Clyde, but not quite. Okay, they'll be able to hear me because I'll use my microphone. Um, it might pick up other people better. I don't know. Okay. Hello, Hello. 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 I am here to, uh, to thank Noise Bridgers for participating in something that was really fun and had lots of volunteers. Um, and when I told Bernice about how many people were involved, she was like, How did you get so many people to help? That's amazing. Because Bernice did our, our Sunday streets before, um, and we heard that it was going to happen again, and we thought, you know, it was so cool when Bernice did it, let's do another Sunday streets. So we did it. Um, so we put out the word that it wasn't just going to be our Sunday streets, because it happens to be in Valencia. We put out the word that we wanted this to be a getting together for the beginnings of the Bay Area Consortium of Hackerspaces. And I say beginnings, even though Bay Area Consortium of Hackerspaces, according to hackerspaces.org, had meetings at the Omni Commons way back in 2013, like actual physical meetings. But what we did is we put out the word that we wanted to invite all the hacker spaces in the Bay Area to come and present. And uh, we got a hold of as many as we could in just a short time before the event. And we had representatives from Studio Room and Ace Monster Toys in the booth. And we talked about all the other spaces and we asked people where they were from and we told them, hey, the hacker space is closest to you. We recommended all the hacker spaces in town. So, Sunday Streets was the excuse to get together and be out in the public, and it was a lot of fun. Um, and it was a great opportunity for us to work on having more volunteers involved in outreach events, since from Northridge 14 to Northridge 15, we're trying to increase the amount of people who participate in outreach. So how did we do it? Well, we used uh, Discord and Slack, and we got together, and this is what it came to look like. So we set up booths. Um, Emily was teaching like a sewing and uh, banner making of a workshop to get a couple of different ones, something really cool, uh, to represent one of our activity stations. Little they're flowers, rolling, I think. They're rolling flowers? Yeah. Fabric flowers. Um, we had an amazing interactive physical game that was built by Noisebridge Bay Area developer participants, um, where you would have all these glowing lights and interact with your phone. We had a Noisebridge booth, we had a studio room, and uh, Ace booth. Who came from there? What? Who came from Sudo and, and uh, Ace? Oh, don't put me on the spot. Okay. Mark, okay. Sorry. Mark, Mark, you know where we're Mark. 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 Yeah. Okay. So most importantly, we, we, we gave lots of Monte to people for donations. Uh, that's what this is really all a front for. It's a <laughs> big Monte industrial complex. We had people with sign up systems because this is all about building people who want to come and participate in these hacker spaces. That's why we do this, right? So what did we show for Noisebridge? Well, we showed a project that we've been working on. Which is a long-term project we showed at the uh, at the uh, Maker Fair when it used to happen. And the whole point of this Bach booth concept is our own version of Maker Fair. That's why we're calling it Hacker Fair. Now, if you're from another hacker space and you have a street fair coming to your neighborhood, you should host one. It should be your hacker space host the Bay Area Hacker Spaces Hacker Fair at your local area. So we want to do one in Sedona, uh, and we want to do one in East Bay and South Bay, and your space could take the lead on this, and we'll, we'll help. So. Uh, the idea behind it uh, for our exhibition was to show something we've been working on. So we showed this. This is a world that, oh, hey, hi there, who's that? It's Arity. This is a VR world in VR chat, which is the first uh, maker sort of uh, metaverse that's any good. And we can see us working on it. Here's Arity working on that one, and here's me working on this one. And we can see ourselves infinitely looking at ourselves working on it at infinitum. Um, and this was a, a donated project with all the scans of noise bridgers who came and worked on it. Um, so we had people come with uh, iPhone 12 Pros and so on and LiDAR and scan all over the space. And I, it's hard to show you the whole thing in one sitting because this is the entire neighborhood. If you can walk outside, if I poke my head outside, you'll see that there's the street outside and we could walk all the way across to the, to the old noise bridge. We can actually go upstairs, see all the rooms upstairs. And we could go across the fire escapey thing, the slide out the back chute, and we could go all the way to the old noise bridge. And we could walk all the way down Valencia Street to the original, 
Sorry, so Sunday is reading citation. It's really hard to do this with track time. So you can get involved in two ways. You can get involved in the Sunday streets activities, even if you're from a different hackerspace, because this is an intra hackerspace activity. There's the phone booth for time traveling to the old voice search, by the way. Um, so you can party on. And there's a secret ramp right now that I think it doesn't, doesn't quite work. But I can show it to you in Unity. So what does this look like from a big perspective? What we're building is a map of the whole area. If you want to contribute to this, there is a GitLab project. So if you want to contribute to Sunday Streets or do Sunday Streets or any kind of activities for future ones, the next one's going to be next month, go to noisebridge.net slash wiki slash Sunday Streets and get involved. Uh, and like I said, this isn't just for Noisebridge users. It's for any hackerspace or, or maker act activity group in the Bay. We're basically replacing Maker Faire with Hacker Maker Faire, run by hackerspaces for hackerspaces. I'm in. I'm in. Um, the old noise. What's that? Hi. Okay. So to summarize, you can also work on this Simbridge project, which is gitlab.com slash unityversity slash Simbridge VR chat. And we'll just end with this kind of trippy visual of imagine the whole Bay Area visualized in a VR world, our metaverse by four hackers. So we can drop into our own neighborhood right here and have the whole of the Bay Area interactive and not just on the, uh, not just on the, uh, the one noise bridge place. So we can go around the corner and teleport back up to the sky and fly to Ace, fly to Pseudo, fly to Hacker Dojo. We can connect all of these up and have one big connection point where no matter what hackerspace you're in, we could all interact with each other through the virtual world and meet up in physical in-person events. So that's what Sunday Streets is the beginning of, hopefully. This very consortium of hackerspaces events will bring us all together, both virtually and physically. Thank you. Uh, so it's in VR chat, and the instructions are on the um, the page. Wiki, wiki somewhere. Yeah, let me just show a really quick little <coughs> question there. What was that? Um, okay, so if you wanted to try this for yourself, this VR chat world can be searched for. You open VR chat, and you have to have your settings set to allow uh, like unauthorized DIY hacker stuff uh, under settings. There are instructions. In yeah, under settings, you go to um, allow community labs, this thing right here, and then under world, you type in Simbridge. Simbridge, the new one is called 272. You can go to the old one as well, which didn't have the new 272 in it. it it'll take a second sometimes to load up the results. But there it is. There's the. Uh, is there audio on the VR chat? Yes. And. Um, but allow, I just wanted to show this one clip of the actual event because people worked really hard to make this, and this is what it's like to be at a Sunday Street. It's super fun. Everyone had a good time, and it'll just get bigger. And that that parking lot behind us there is open to hosting us without a Sunday Street tent. We don't have to close down the street. We could have 20, 30 pavilion tents of all the hacker spaces in the Bay Area on our own showgrounds in downtown San Francisco. Way more accessible than Maker Faire. So let's do it. It'll take hours of processing after you capture the photos to generate it, or you could just have an iPhone 12 Pro or 13 Pro, which will do it instantly. Oh. So it's like, either way. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a 12 Pro. Uh, my mom has one, but she doesn't really need anymore, so I'm going to switch over. Do we have any more talks? Does anyone have a call for talks they want to see next up? Good question. I want to see the, the brewing club serve drinks mm -hmm. during five minutes of fame. Like that would be a good draw. So there's this guy. So originally I got the brewing equipment with this guy, Alexander. Yeah. Twitter boy. And not Alexander, he's back in town. Yeah, he's back in town. 
So this was like more than a year ago. He was last year for Iraq, um, and then um, now he's back again. He was gone for an entire year. Now he's back for Iraq, and we still have not seen a bruise. Back to Denmark. There have been brews. There were brews served at NB14. Oh, they, they served a batch of fresh noise brewed, uh, brewed like chair. pseudo brewed pop brewed or brewed something. Chair. Kombucha. It was good. It was Dana. Dana yeah. Dana. So it's happened, but we need to keep yeah, it happening. Great. Science for thirsty people. Is that it for five minutes of fame? I'm going to try and source a talk from Mike about the Roomba that. Um, can people who run meetups, like machine learning or gaming, maybe source a talk next time? We just did. That was a gaming. Oh, we cool. made that during gaming club. The that 3D was, world. Cool. That's Good. a product of the game group. Yeah. Sweet. And that was a t that was an AI talk. So there's two. Yeah. So since since. Since this is a totally crowdsourced, there was no MC, we all sort of just did it. Uh, can we all sign off and say goodnight, Noise Bridge? Good night, people. Good night, Noise Bridge. Good night. Good night. Good night. Also, big shout out to Wolf for yeah. those last day of preparation. Thank you for making it happen. Thank you. Awesome.